Hey, I'm Krenz, and this is Krenz Plays Dark Souls Journey to Elden Ring, where I will be playing every Dark Souls game for the first time in order until I finally get to Elden Ring. Thanks for checking it out and hit the like and subscribe thingies to follow the whole journey. So after my last long play session, I felt like Dark Souls was finally clicking with me. I was developing some real muscle memory with the controls, and I was fighting the actual enemies instead of the weird game mechanics. And with the Capra Demon under my belt, definitely the biggest challenge I encountered so far, I was eager to explore the rest of Lordran. So eager, in fact, that I didn't even bother to stream my next play session. I had taken a peek into the sewers previously, and I got the feeling it was going to be a fairly tedious trudge to the next area. Not exactly the most exciting content to stream, I thought, but I didn't quite expect to run into this little guy. More on him later. If you're wondering why I'm already in the sewers at the start of this video, it's because I'm a real genius and recorded the first part of the session like this. Unless you're really into health bars, it's not that exciting. By the time I got the zoom figured out, I was deep in the uh, depths, and I found this guy. His name is Laurentis, and he's pretty useless to a dumb warrior like me. Still, it's always nice to have more friends back at the Firelink Shrine. Like this guy, I'm sure we'll be pals forever. I continued deeper into the sewers, but I was a little confused. Wasn't I supposed to be going up towards some kind of bell? I thought I was following the path the game was putting in front of me, using keys to open doors as I found them and continuing forward. If only there had been some way to get further up in the undead parish. Any way at all. So for now I'm exploring the sewers. And it's not a lot of fun. It's twisty and confusing, with barely visible holes in the floor that drop you to lower levels and completely disorient you. It also has these gross blob things that are a big pain to kill. I mean, firebombs do work, but I didn't have that many. I did find a bonfire pretty quickly though, thanks to the master key, which would come in very handy. As I continued on, I saw this magic Elton John looking dude doing a weird little dance, but it didn't seem to do anything. He was easy enough to take out and, uh, hey wait, why are these rats glowing? Oh. Thankfully, when I came back, Rocket Man was gone and the rats weren't magic anymore. Easy enough. I felt a little bad about going all Jeffrey Dahmer on these rats in front of their mom. What you say? So I decided to do what any respectable serial killer would do and take out the witness. She was a little harder than I expected. She was super fast and I wasn't really able to get behind her like I could with other large bosses. And she did some nasty swipe attacks that killed me fast. She avenged her fallen rat children quite a few times. In the end, I pretty much just cheesed her by hiding in the little hallway and occasionally popping out to do some stabbing. It wasn't fast, but it worked eventually, and I was rewarded with all of that sweet, sweet, uh, one humanity. I don't know what I expected, but it was more than that. But at least clearing this hallway will open up a shortcut to... Uh, yeah, I don't even know where I'm going at this point. Oh hey, this was my first time encountering Dark Souls Basilisks. These guys are super weak, but extremely dangerous because they puke clouds of... something? That rapidly applies curse. If you don't know, curse is pretty much the worst effect in the game. If the curse bar fills up all the way, which it does pretty fast, you die instantly. Even worse, when you revive, you are cursed, which permanently removes half of your health bar. Awesome! I got to learn this the hard way, but the warning that pops up after you're cursed reminded me that I had picked up a purging stone earlier. A lucky break. I was able to remove the curse, and I was very careful to avoid getting cursed again, since I only had the one. After a little more exploring, I ran into Dom Hall again, a vendor I had seen under a bridge near Firelink previously. It was pretty strange to find him hanging out down here, but he's a strange guy, so whatever. He sold some pretty decent armor, but I couldn't afford any of it yet, so I continued on. I cut out a lot of backtracking here because I got lost quite a few times. I really could not make heads or tails of the layout of this place, and repeatedly falling down holes didn't help. But eventually I stumbled my way into this huge room, which screamed boss fight to me, but I didn't really know what to expect. Oh hey look, a little alligator snake thing. Wait, what? Oh. Oh. Yeah, so this is the gaping dragon. A very unfortunately named and unfortunate looking boss that is absolutely massive. I had no idea how to fight this thing. Just look at me bumbling around trying to find an angle of attack. I tried blocking, 
that didn't really work. I tried getting on his sides to attack, but he would just spin around and swipe at me, or just jump up and body slam me. I thought maybe attacking behind was the way to go, but his tail ended up being a problem too. If only there was some way... Oh hey, that should help. Plus a weapon too? Nice. With his tail out of the way, I was able to start learning his attack patterns and trying to get behind him. He tended to do this charge move that I could sidestep so that he would zoom right past me and I could get behind him. I seemed to be making progress, but his up B smash was still a problem. By my fifth attempt, I had pretty much figured out his attacks and it was a matter of sidestepping his charge, avoiding the huge vomit pools, and poking his butt until finally victory was achieved. The dragon dropped the Blight Town key and some other stuff that I didn't really care about. But I did have a crap load of souls, so I headed back to Dom Hall to do some shopping. I picked up some shiny new armor and... Oh hey, I guess I can open this door now. Wait a second, Blight Town? Okay, now I was really confused. Before I started playing this game, I hadn't heard much about the Dark Souls series, but even knowing nothing else, I had heard about the horrors of Blight Town. An impossible maze full of poisonous enemies and death around every corner, but I had to see if it was really as bad as they say. I took out some big boys near the entrance, and they didn't seem too bad, so I continued deeper. Soon these little golem looking dudes started coming after me, but they weren't so tough either. The walkways did seem treacherous, and the verticality of the ladders was pretty confusing, but other than this creepy giant squid thing, this place didn't seem nearly as bad as I was expecting. In fact, it seemed kinda easy- oh, okay, no, never mind. Please tell me I at least found a bonfire somewhere in Blight Town. Okay, yeah, I guess not. Well, that's enough sewers for now. At this point, I needed to take a step back and figure out where I was actually supposed to go and how I missed the bell in the undead parish. I also knew I needed to get ready for Blight Town, and some NPCs had mentioned something about a ring I should find before I went much further. So stay tuned for all that and more on the next episode of Krentz Plays Dark Souls, and thanks for watching.